Now I'm the king of the swingers, roll the jungle VIP. Good afternoon from Yummy B TV. Wishing you all well. It went my way today after yesterday's uh, drama that didn't go my way. I woke up this morning and I said, you know what? You're going to get the device today, Yami. And lo and behold, you've got the lovely um, Keely down there. He took me through all the procedures and sorted it out for me. I love you, my little angel, with proper stuff. So let me know the sound, the quality, the picture. I'm beginning to think I looked at some of the uh, videos earlier when I, when I was walking back about it. It makes me look even more uglier because the picture's clearer. But no, on a serious note, uh, before we get to the sad stuff again and, you know, uh, the most a couple of the most evil men uh, that ever walked through the system and are still in the system. Um, it's great to get that bit of the job done before we move on to the next stage after that. So a bit of progress now over the last few weeks, listening to you all about the volume and the sound of finally getting the job done. Right, uh, we go back to uh, Britain's most evil, uh, sadistic, horrible killers, probably serial killers. We know one of them is, I believe that, Mark Dixie, uh, the murderer of the lovely little girl, Sally Ann Bowman. This one's really, really deep. And it shows you the lengths of what family will go to to get them evil bastards back, if you get what I mean. And this is fact, what I'm telling you. There's no disputing. There's no yummy is hearsay and all that. This is absolute facts, right? Now, you know I had my ear to the ground. You know that I get a lot of information from the powers that be during this time and that kind of thing. Um, if not then, later, whatever, or listening to conversations down the segregation where you get a good understanding of what happens on those Rule 43 protection wings. Now, contrasting characters by all intents and purposes. Steve Wright, the Suffolk Strangler, murdered many uh, a young lady during a spree that went on for two, three, funny enough, I was in the cat haze when those crimes were going on. And I remember um, the kind of feeling that was going, I think it was around Ipswich, that kind of stuff there. I haven't um, looked back on history in that way, but I remember on TV, the BBC News, every half hour, every hour, another body being found. Um, how horrific. Um, we find out that it's Stephen Wright. Very much a lone character in the category A's on those protection wings. Doesn't talk to anybody. When he goes to the gym, he trains alone. Like I said, um, keeps probably all what he's thinking and feeling within himself. These are the differences between these kind of murderers and serial killers. And Mark Dixie, contrasting character, completely thinks he was Jack the Lad, right? Um, he came, all right, we'll say it was Long Latin, right? Um... Hyper, um, aggressive, reminds me a lot, because I haven't met Peter Tobin, that serial killer, another monster from Scotland. But his behaviour reminds me a bit of Peter Tobin. You know, when the camera's in front of him, he fights back, and, uh, uh, you know, with that evil, evil um, presence without accepting himself that he's evil, or probably doesn't even know, or probably thinks it's normal. I don't know, right? But um, Mark Dixie um, had two fights, I believe, on the football pitch. Right? Uh, one of them he won, one of them he was losing. Right? So, this is a man who, you know, on those protection wins can scare a few of those other Rule 43 protectioners, what they're in for and all that. There's weaker on that wing. So, he could use his aggression and his personality, so he thinks, and his character uh, to frighten some of those men. So, he will train with two or three men, that kind of stuff. Right? Now, with those fights on the football pitch, I'll tell you today, uh, that he's always arguing with the referees. But I did that kind of stuff. So um, I'm falling out with teammates and that kind of thing. So I know about the two fights that happened uh, during those gym sessions, right? The other thing as well, and this is a real, real deep, deep bit, you know. And I'm, I was feeling a bit funny about doing it. Now, his victim, Sally Ann Bowman. Now, many of you will remember this case, right? Lovely, beautiful girl who had a lovely boyfriend and who had a whole future in front of her, right? Um, about 40 minutes before the crime with Sally Ann uh, Bowman, he tried it on another lady, but she was lucky and she got away. What was going through his mind that night? So that tells me that there has to have been other murders before that. I haven't checked to see if he did get any more charges or anything like that. Um, but Sally Ann Bowman, not so lucky. But did you know 
that the victim's um, mum, greatly so, I say, what a sad... When these things happen to families and they relive what their, their loved ones or their next of kin or their daughters and sons could have been going through on them last moments before they died, it is heart-wrenching when they got a lie there, when they know that they was helpless and there's nothing mum and dad or families could have done anything about it. Do you see what I mean? This is absolutely fact that she tried to get a job as a visits canteen lady in the cat A's so she could go there and do the job on him herself. How sad and how rightfully so. If, during that time, if she would have phoned me, I would have had contact not laughing or anything. I would have done it for her because it's easy. You could have easily gone on protection to get some of those monsters for other things, especially when you know certain crimes like um, the proper convicts, when they see that kind of stuff on telly, it kind of... You know what I mean? It's not, it's not um, like we're better than them kind of thing. It's just a certain crimes, just sick and certain men, you know, with weaker targets and sexual desires and that kind of stuff. But Mark Dixie thinks he's something, he's, he thinks he's something, he really thinks he's hard. You know what I mean? He pushes his face up in front of staff and wants to have a go. Like, you know that he could never do that on a normal wing. Did we also know? that one of those days you came through the Suffolk Strangler's cell where you was trying to bully him and he put you in, he put you in a bear hug and let you go, um, but you come unstuck there. You know, not, not being funny again, but that actually took place too. Uh, because when he came through the door, Stephen Wright went like that without even talking because he knew they must have had some little thing beforehand and he might have been expecting him. You know what psychopaths are like anyway. They probably uh, got six senses to know. Well, I had those senses as well, but I wasn't a psychopath. But what a lady. Uh, my heart goes out to her as well because it's fair to say there is a lot of victims, parents and things that wish. And it ain't the first time these kind of things have been tried in life uh, where... Uh, the victim's families want to get back at the perpetrator uh, because their lives feel like they're worthless without the loved ones that they lost to sadistic animals like that. That story is absolute fact. I know the tabloids are watching me now. I know all the crime experts are watching me now because you never knew that bit as far as I knew. Uh, but I can tell you, absolute fact. And I would have, I would have bowed down to her if, if, if she would have got her way, but they sussed onto it. So there we have it, all right? Um, maybe more on the, the Suffolk Strangler as well. But I'm just christening the new phone, feeling a little bit happy with a darker subject. But those are two insights to two of Britain's worst killers. Sending loads of love to you. Hopefully, we'll be back up later on.